sporty Kate was in her element as she and William kicked off a surprise two-day tour of Northern Ireland with an action-packed day of activities. A smile was never far from the Duchess of Cambridge's face as she showed off her footballing skills, tried her hand at archery, practiced putting up a tent and took on her husband in a heated Canadian canoe race. The couple appeared in excellent spirits as they arrived at their first stop of Belfast's Windsor Park Stadium, where they jostled on the pitch as they joined excited schoolchildren for a spirited kickabout. Kate, 37, started the day in a 1,200 pounds Carolina Herrera coat and 199 pounds LK Bennett boots, but soon swapped them for a 159 pounds Navy barber jacket and 80 pounds New Balance trainers, which proved a more practical choice. Keen football fan William, 36, also came prepared with a second pair of shoes and spent much of the afternoon in Nike trainers. After the kickabout, the couple headed some two hours west of Belfast to the Rosker Youth Village on the shores of La Kern, Co-Fermanagh, where they met youngsters who benefit from the outdoor adventure camp. Gate was given a canoe lesson, while the Duke of Cambridge tested his balance on a low-ropes assault course. Their final visit of the day will be to Belfast Empire Hall to celebrate inspirational young people who are making a real difference in Northern Ireland. It is thought the Duke of Cambridge will follow his grandmother the Queen's lead and call for calm over Brexit in a speech to be delivered at the event. The Cambridges will carry out a number of engagements tomorrow before returning to London. In keeping with royal visits to Northern Ireland, Details were not released in advance and the itinerary was not disclosed for security reasons. The Duke and Duchess of Cambridge spent the late afternoon at Rosker Youth Village, which serves as a haven of hope and escape for children facing challenges in their daily lives. After being greeted by cheering children, the Duke and Duchess watched on as children played in a series of activities at the youth facility. The Duchess saw a group of teenagers assembling cooking utensils used for camping. Meanwhile the Duke spoke to children about their interests and hobbies. He asked what they loved most about the youth facility and also spoke to them about tree climbing. It's a great sense of achievement when you do it, the Duke said. What do you guys love the most about coming here? The children described to him their favorite activities and how they have made lifelong friends at the youth village. Kate helped assemble a tent before taking part in a game of archery. The Duchess missed her first shot, but with some tips from the children hit the target on her second attempt. The couple then went head ahead in a canoeing race on La Kern. William's team was crowned the winner, reaching the marker a few seconds ahead of Kate's team. The Duchess congratulated her opposing team before returning to shore. As the couple left the youth facility they were presented with a bowl painted by some of the children. They also signed their names on two separate tiles which will be placed on a wall outside the building. The royals then posed with children and staff from Rosker for a photograph before leaving to the sounds of more cheering. Earlier they visited Windsor Park, home of the Irish Football Association. On arrival at the National Stadium at Windsor Park, the couple were greeted by scores of cheering schoolchildren. William and Kate stopped to chat with the crowds with the Duchess being presented with a number of bunches of flowers. International boss Michael O'Neill was among senior Irish Football Association staff who welcomed them at the entrance to the recently redeveloped venue. O'Neill, who himself won 31 caps playing for Northern Ireland, has been credited with bringing the glory days back to the team during his tenure as manager. He led the side to its first major tournament in 30 years at the 2016 European Championships in France. During their tour of the venue, the couple also met Northern Ireland footballing legend Pat Jennings. Former Spurs and Arsenal goalkeeper Jennings is Northern Ireland's record caps holder, with 119 appearances during a career that took in the 1982 and 1986 World Cup finals. William and Kate were shown a bronze cast print of the Stoppers' celebrated safe hands as they walked through the stadium's Heritage Centre. Out on the Windsor Park turf, the Royals joined in some training exercises with local schoolchildren. Kate and William both had a go at dribbling drills, to the delight of the young footballers. Kate ran around a marked-out square keeping the ball under control and also jogged up and down on the spot. She then joined William in a small-sided game, each playing on different sides. 
both participated with gusto, running about with their young teammates, passing and tackling during the well-spirited encounter. During the visit, the couple learned more about the Irish Football Association's community football projects and its work breaking down some of Northern Ireland's traditional divides through sport. They met people involved in an initiative aimed at encouraging more women into key decision-making roles within the game and also met young people involved in the Goal Programme, a project designed for those not in employment, education or training. William and Kate also heard about IFA workshops and education courses that help students develop life skills. They learned about the Stay Onside initiative, which works with criminal justice agencies in a bid to reduce offending rates. The Cambridges also heard more about the game of power chair, an adapted version of football for wheelchair users. As they left the stadium at the end of the visit, three schoolchildren presented the couple with three green Northern Ireland home shirts, with the names George, Charlotte and Louis on the backs. It is the third time the couple have visited the region together. On previous visits, the couple attended a garden party at the royal residence at Hillsborough Castle, Codown. In June 2016, when they mingled with many of the 2,500 invited guests. Five years earlier, they visited Northern Ireland just weeks before their wedding. On that occasion, Kay tossed pancakes at Belfast City Hall and hammered and fence posts at Greenmount Agriculture College in Coenterim.